Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the part three of Python trying to play this self-driving game. We have functions defined in the previous part where we have the click function, the accelerate function, turn left and turn right. So from our Python program, we can now control the vehicle. At the same time, we also have some lane detection going on. So we can approximately give out the judgment of where these lanes are and where the car is supposed to be. So if I just have a quick run, and we can see the lanes are detected and they're pretty much at the right place of where they should be. Now, the next step for us is to use this information of where the lanes are and based on how the car is moving, it should maneuver itself automatically through the code. And so we'll write a simple program or an AI application which can measure these lanes and at the same time, just control itself so it can be on the lanes. Now, let's come down. And let's make it a little bit big so we can understand the code. And there are many ways of doing this. One of the ways is we have the lanes and we have the slope of the lane. The slope of the lane varies with respect to where the car is present. So uh, let me run this back again. So if I just simply run this, you can see now this particular line has a slope which is a little bit different because the slant and the angle where it's present is different compared to this line and as the car moves forward this slope will vary and that is what we have to maneuver so if i were to move this car so let's say if i had to come down on this stage and let's see what happens to the same line that we saw earlier and at this stage you can see the slope of this line has moved the lane itself has moved to a certain point from here. So this slope ha has basically changed. And if we can monitor how the slope is moving, then we can say whether the car is to turn right or turn left. But let me come back here. And if we run this bigger, so where are we detecting these lines? So as soon as we take a screenshot, we are first doing the canny edge detection. We are then doing the region of interest. So we can just point out where our lanes are located. Then we have the hood lines. And at the end, from all the lines that are detected by this hood lines transform, we then do an average of all the lines and give out two lines, one on the left and one on the right. And then we finally display these lines on the image. Well, the display and the show is something which we are not interested at this stage because we are just needed. What we need is just the location of the line so we can tell our function whether we need to turn left or right. Now, where are we doing that? We're doing this in the average slope intercept. So let's go back to that function and we have the average slope intercept. And here we are initially just taking all the lines that were detected by the hoop transform and we're collecting them in the left fit and the right fit. And then towards the end, we're doing an average of all the left lines and then uh, average of all the right lines. Once we have that, then we are asking the function to give the points so that we can then draw the thing. So we, but we don't need the points at this stage also. What we are more interested in is the slope of these lines, the left fit and the right fit average, because this is the final line that is going to be drawn on the image. So let's use this. Come down here, uh, what we can do is first, print the slope so we can see where, how the slope is moving when we are driving the vehicle. So the easiest way to do the slope intercept for that is this left fit average and the right fit average is defined by the slope and the intercept because at this stage we have not even made the points and here we have more information about the slope and the intercept and any line is given by the slope and intercept. So the slope of the left line, we can call it as M left and the left intercept is equal to left fit average. So this is how it's defined. Similarly, we have the right slope and we have the R intercept. We'll call it as R for the right intercept and right fit average. So now we have two lines and we just identified the M left and the R right. We'll use this information to now you know, print it out 
we can see how the slope is moving when the car moves. So print M left, print M right. We're not interested in the intercept, but intercept is part of the property of the left fit average. So hence we are doing that, but we don't need the intercept information as well. Let's come back here and let's reset this program. It, it'll play a quick ad because this is one of those free games. We'll let it play for a few seconds. In the meantime, we should be able to see the print function give out all the lanes, all the slope here in the bottom for us. I think we are ready to run this. And it's just printing it once. Now, this is another thing. We at this point, we have done it just for one image. We first, I think, need to convert this into a more by loop where it can continuously read and give out information. So what we can do is have a variable like i is equal to zero, while i is less than maybe say 10 frames. So we'll count 10 frames and come back here. So click four, five, six, then come this, and we can do a quick tab. So we can bring all of this in the under the while function. We don't need to display so these these things are of no use. These things are of no use as well. As well. We can remove this from here. Do we need the click function? It's not going to give any harm, so we we can leave the click function. So right now we are able to do a while loop where it can continuously read through and curve and pour out the values for us. Come back here and let's run this. So we can see that the slopes are now printing it for us. They are a little bit big it's because of the floating point. So it's taking all the variables and it might be too much for us to go through. So let's go back. Oops, it's a continuous loop because we did not have the I function going on. Wow, because we have the click function, it's not even going back. It's not even letting me go back to the Python PyCharm program. <laughs> okay, we are back now after crashing the program. So before we forget, we need to put this i plus or equal to one. That way we can increment it. Earlier we saw it went into an infinite loop and it was continuously running the program without any endpoint for us. So now at least after 10 digits, it will stop. The other issue we saw was it was giving up, it was throwing out so many variables, so many numbers in this, and it was too much of information for us to process. So we'll come back here and do a quick roundup of this. So we'll say m left equal to round m left by maybe three decimal point. Similarly, we'll do m right equal to round m right again for three decimal point. And let's run this and see how it comes out. So we can see now it's able to give out some valuables and you can see how I'm moving around. I think 10 is a very small number for us. Let's come back here and try maybe 50. And come back here. Let's run this. So let's monitor how the code is working out. Now, as soon as it detects or you know the lines are not detected, it gives out this error. So wherever the slope and the intercept is not present, it gives out this error. And the, one of the ways we can remove this error is by using a try and accept function in Python, but we'll go into that later. But at this point, let's try to understand. So we can see the slopes are moving uh, based on how we are moving the vehicle in the left or right direction. So what we can do is have a simple threshold function right in this stage. So where we are monitor, where we have the m left and m right function. So we can say wherever the m left function is going beyond a certain point, it should automatically go through. Now it should automatically turn left or turn right. So let's come back here and we can say if m left is less than or equal to, the m left is a minus variable, so we can say m left some threshold value, we'll define the threshold value at a later stage, and we'll say turn right, if, the, if it's less than this threshold value. And similarly, turn right for maybe 0.2 seconds. And the next stage is if, if the m right function, if m right function is greater than a certain value because it's a positive variable, so we'll do 
it created that a certain variable at that stage it should automatically turn left and we'll give let's say 0 0.2 so this should take care of the turn left and turn right functions as the car moves now let's come back here uh, reset this program so it can come back uh, one thing we can do is change our view so we can get more information about the lane so instead of having this car view we have certain other different types of views here where we can just focus on the lanes and let's try to run this i'll comment this because we don't have the information about the thresh at this stage we'll just print out again just the slope and see how it's working we can see it's giving out some variables in the 0.22 range 0.35 range and whenever it's changing this lens, it's variable, variable going through that range. We can see that whenever it departs from this 225 and 305 range, so somewhere in that 225 and 305, I think 225 for the left range and 347, 341, 305 for the right range. So if I give this threshold, it should hopefully go through. So, and this is again trial and error. You'll have to play with these values depending on what game you're using this. And especially in a real time value, we'll have to change these threshold values based on what the image is giving us. But let's come back here. And instead of the threshold, we can say minus, in, we have 0 0.228. So we can say 0 0.225 or you know, a little bit variable. 0.2 and it should turn right. We'll have a print function telling us where the car is moving. Turn right. At the same stage, uh, we can have this, this value. We have 347, 346, 341. We can go with 341 here. 0 0.341. And we have the turn left function. Again, we'll give out a print statement turning turn left. So this function will let us know that the function is moving turn left or turn right. Coming back here, let's reset this, hide this function, coming back to the same level we wanted. And this stage, we will just simply run and see how good our function is performing. So it looks like something is moving through, but at the same time, it's not moving forward because even though the left function, right function is there, we are not calling it. So it's, for some reason, it's not going to the turn left and turn right function. One thing we can do is add an accelerate function. So accelerate 0 0.2 maybe. And I think I want to remove this click function out of the while loop so we can have access to our mouse. Even the, because if, as soon as we put click, it takes to this particular region of the image and then our mouse get locked into that region. So we'll do the click function instead of putting it there. We'll say 456 by 316 and we'll remove the click function from here. So we have a continuous acceleration. So the car is going to be continuously accelerated and based on whether it needs to take a turn left or turn right, it will move accordingly. So let's see how much this function works at this stage. It's turning right, turning left, turning left. I'm turning right out oh, and left. Oh, so it's able to maneuver. Okay. So as soon as the lanes are lost, then it doesn't know whether it needs to take the hard left or the hard right. But so far, so far, it, it's able to take the turn left and turn right. We can turn this, run this once again and see how this works. We have turn right, turn right. It's doing automatically. Turn left. It's fairly fast. And there we go. We lost it. So it's fairly able to monitor itself with if as long as the lanes are present. The moment the lanes are lost, then we need to have another function. We'll have some more complicated pro application where we can then define whether it needs to take a hard left, hard right, look for you know traffic, and based on that, we can move forward. But at this stage, I think we've done good enough to understand how the lane detection works and how we can maneuver the vehicle. So instead of using a video where the car is already moving and the lanes are already detected, the turn on left and turn right functions are already predicted, we have in this game obtained the turn prediction aspect where we can now control a vehicle based on the lanes that we obtained.